Welcome to the Civil War Facial Hair Tournament Reveal Show. The bracket shown tonight will be full of matchups featuring the absolute pinnacle of 1860s beards, mustaches, chops, sideburns, and many more. Brief background information will be stated for each contestant. Let's dive in. First off, we have Abram Wakeman, who was not a soldier, but he was rather a New York congressman who also served as the postmaster for New York City. Later on in 1864, he would work with the Lincoln re-election campaign as well. Second up is Alpheus Williams, who was a Union Major General, which is going to be a common rank here tonight. Uh, most of the contestants here are Major General rank for the Union Army, and we have a couple Confederate soldiers as well. So with Mr. Williams here, he was a member of the Michigan Militia before the war began. He went on as the war did uh, lead to many battles, of course. He fought at the Battle of Antietam, also at Chancellorsville and Gettysburg, and he was also involved with Sherman's March to the Sea. Thirdly, we have John Haskell King, who was a Union Colonel. Being a veteran of the Second Seminole War, he already had a background in the military in the lead up to the war. He would go on to command troops in the Battle of Shiloh and would receive a promotion for bravery after the Battle of Chickamauga. Later on, he would be engaged in the Siege of Atlanta in Georgia during the March to the Sea campaign as well. Fourth is going to be Carter Little Page Stevenson, who was a Confederate Major General. He left the U.S. Army when his home state, Virginia, seceded in 1861. He withstood the Siege of Vicksburg and fought at the Battle of Chattanooga. Later on, he would surrender to General Sherman of the Union Army. Next up is W.B. Hazen. He was a Union Major General. He commanded a brigade in the Army of the Ohio. He was instrumental in the victory at Shiloh, and his troops were also successful at the Battle of Chattanooga. Next up is Roman B. Ayers, who was a Union Major General. He commanded both Union artillery and infantry forces at different times. He would go on to fight in the Peninsula Campaign, as well as the battles of Chancellorsville and Gettysburg. Following Gettysburg, he was sent to New York City to help quell draft riots that were happening. People didn't want to join the war as it was going on at that midway point. Next up is Jeb Stewart, who was a Confederate Major General, known for being a West Point graduate, the first on this list, but we'll get to a few more as well. Uh, but he was part of the U.S. Army, and when the John Brown raid at Harper's Ferry happened, he actually helped capture John Brown prior to the Civil War. Later on, he joined the Army of Northern Virginia and commanded troops at Gettysburg. He was mortally wounded at the Battle of Yellow Tavern in 1864 and succumbed to those wounds and died. Next up is Alexander Shaler, who was a Union general. He was awarded the U.S. Army's highest honor for valor at the Second Battle of Fredericksburg. He also went on to fight at Gettysburg and the Wilderness, and he was also captured after the Battle of Wilderness. Later, he was returned to the Union side in a prisoner exchange. So that does it for our left side of our bracket here. Let's go over to the right side. Leading us off here is going to be John McAllister Schofield, who was a Union Lieutenant General. Another West Point graduate, he was also later a philosophy professor. And he won battles at Franklin and Nashville, which were both in Tennessee. Later, he would become a member of General Sherman's unit in North Carolina. Next up is Adelbert Ames, who was a Union second lieutenant, which is the lowest rank of all the contestants we have here today, but still an officer, second lieutenant. He was an artillery officer, and he also switched from artillery to infantry. And he was able to lead a division during the Battle of Gettysburg. And he was elected to U.S. Senate later on, and he served as governor for Mississippi following the war as well. Following up, we're going to have Bleeker Luce, who was a Union Rear Admiral. So he was a member of the Union Navy as an admiral rank. He commanded the Nantucket ship during the Siege of Charleston, South Carolina. And after the war, too, he founded the Naval War College, which was a prestigious school, of course, for uh, naval members to learn the ways of the Navy. Next up is John Dunlap Stevenson, who was a Union Major General. He hailed from Virginia and attended school in North Carolina and served in the Union Army in a Missouri regiment. Next up is James Allen Hardy, who was a Union Major General. He was a veteran of the Mexican-American War previous to the Civil War. 
During the Civil War, however, he took on various administrative roles, and he handed General George Meade his orders to assume the command of the Army of the Potomac in the midway point of the Civil War. Our third to last contestant is Benjamin Alvord, who was a Union Brigadier General. He was a West Point graduate and was talented in the skill of math. He oversaw the District of Oregon out west and built up defenses along the Columbia River. Second to last is Ambrose Burnside, who is the only member of this list here to have a facial hairstyle named after them. So keep that in mind, folks. Uh, with his military experience, he was uh, able to organize an infantry corps to protect Washington, D.C. early on in the war. And he was also named the commander of the Army of the Potomac in 1862. However, a failure at Fredericksburg led him to turning over command to General Joseph Hooker following that battle. Last but not least, we have Christopher C. Auger, who was a Union Major General, another West Point graduate in 1843. He was severely wounded at the Battle of Cedar Mountain. He would also command a division during the Siege of Port Hudson. So there is your list, folks. You are going to take some time here and whittle it down to just one winner in, in the center of this bracket here. So take your time, really carefully select, look at that hair, and see which one has the most flair with their hair. And let us know who you got. We look forward to hearing your responses.